I'm Maggie. Welcome to Experiments in Crafting. Uh, tonight I've got a handful of uh, finished projects and a couple of uh, like work in progress type of projects to show you guys. And then um, I've got a Lytherco box to open. I've opened a bunch of those on stream before, but those are like a subscription service box um, that I've got. And then... Um, sort of just going to turn it back over to you guys and see what you've got to talk about tonight. Um, so I guess I'm going to pull up some projects here. Um, first project I've got tonight. Um, oh, real quick, I see that a couple people are saying hi. Uh, so Twine Twiddler, Runaway Needle Red, and Stephanie all saying hello. Welcome, everyone. Um, thanks for joining me tonight. So... Uh, tonight I've got, all right, so my finished projects here. Um, this hat was primarily made out of Red Heart Soft for, like, the main body. And then the accent pieces, um, this was made out of Red Heart with wool, which, uh, I don't think is a yarn that you can get anymore. It was just some scraps that I had available. And then this little, uh, nose piece was just made out of something that I had, like, on hand. I have no idea what yarn it was. If I had to guess, it was probably Red Heart Super Saver. It's a yarn that's just been, like, hanging out off to the side since forever. So, um, but it's only the little bit here, and then there's the little bit of yellow in the uh, braid sections here. Um, the hat pattern is from Alley Crafts. It is, uh, Alley Crafts has, in my opinion, like, some of the best free hat patterns um, I don't know why, but every single hat that I've made turns out exactly the right size. That being said, uh, I'm not actually sure that this is going to be big enough. I made it for an 18-month-old, um, and the only two options were toddler and 9 to 12 months, I think, on the Alleycrafts website. So I made the 9 to 12 months hoping that it wouldn't be, like, gigantic, and now I'm not totally sure. So... Um, it's pretty cute, and I don't really have anything to try it on right now. I also don't really know how big the kid is. Um, it's, it's a hat for my husband's cousin's daughter, who's like 18 months or so. Um, and I think the last time we saw her was Easter-ish. So, um, kids grow a lot from Easter to Thanksgiving. So, um, anyway... This is a hat I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, the face pattern... Oh, I don't remember the pattern designer. So the pattern was pretty well written, but I'm just really attached to these Alley Crafts hat patterns. Um, so that, if you search for Alley Crafts, uh, she's got a whole blog full of free patterns with all the different sizes. Uh, this is the ear flap hat. Um, so I followed that for the hat portion, and then the face portion... Um, I just searched for penguin hat, and there's two different options. There's sort of a male penguin and a female penguin. Um, the difference being, like, you put a little eyelash on the edges for a female penguin. Um, I'll see if I can remember who made that, or my husband will probably just find it. Um, if you search for penguin hat, there's not all that many on Ravelry. Um, but it's pretty cute. At least I thought it turned out pretty well. So... That's one project. Um, like I said, the body of that hat was Red Heart Soft. Uh, Red Heart Soft is not terrible. Um, it A lot of people complain that Red Heart Super Saver used to be as soft as Red Heart Soft is now. Um, but I think Red Heart Soft actually feels pretty nice. Um, so, let's see. The I obviously did this hat out of uh, black, but I also bought some light gray because they were buy one, get one half off at Michael's, so I figured I might as well get a half off one. Um, Red Heart Soft is a number four medium weight yarn. It's 100% acrylic. You get 113 grams or four ounces. For that, you get 204 yards or 187 meters. They recommend a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, which is an eye hook, or a 5 millimeter US 8 uh, knitting needle. So... That's Red Heart Soft. I don't know if you want to... There, you got that a little bit more zoomed in. Um, so the way this has worked is you make this face piece. 
Um, I sewed on the eyes and the beak portion before I sewed the face to the hat. Um, I think you could probably do it the other way around, but then you have to go through a lot more layers to sew the eyes and the hat on. And it lays a little wonky, but like when you hold the hat and like shape it into a head shape, then it lays flat along the edge. So if I just lay it out, it's got a little bit of a ruffle to it. But um, it was a little bit tricky sewing the face portion on because I had to try and keep it tight around something. Um, I ended up using a stuffed toothless from like uh, How to Train Your Dragon. I've got a Build-A-Bear stuffed toothless and his head's pretty big and round. And so I stuck it on there. Uh, it's also a stuffed animal that doesn't have fur and doesn't have like a really easy to pierce uh, fabric. So I was able to sew like against that material um, without having to worry about it. With yarn needles, you don't have to worry too much about it. But if you have like a uh, more like a teddy bear, you're going to like get caught in the hair. And like sometimes they have more like knit type of fabric that the hair is stuck through. All right, we got some chatter in the chat there. Let me see what's going on. Um... Fine Twiddler's doing a throw in Red Heart Soft, the peppermint throw um, that somebody shared last week. Maybe Twine Twiddler, but I'm not sure. Uh, it might have been just one that we passed around last week. I'm not sure who shared that. Um, somebody said cute kids, or uh, Runaway Needle Red said cute kids hats. Uh, oh, uh, my husband got the hat link in there. And then... How are some 100% acrylic yarns so much softer different than others? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I think it has a lot to do with uh, a combination of fiber length. Uh, the actual individual fiber diameters. Um, so they're usually measured in microns. Um, so if you pick out these little bitty hairs off of the yarn, um, each one of these has a diameter, like this little bitty wispy hair that I just pulled off. Um, I don't think you'd be able to see it, but like I have a hair here between my, you can probably see their light being reflected. This has a like micron rating. So it's however many micrometers it is, a, is wide. And so when things are really, really fine, um, they're harder to make that fine, but they they feel softer against your hands. Um, so they're, when you buy really nice wool, um, something like a, even if we were talking like nice, but like not super crazy expensive, um, like Merino wool. Merino has a finer uh fiber size than something like a uh BFL which is blue face lester um so merino might be I'm trying to remember what fine wool is like 18 microns where BFL might be 25 or something like that 22 I don't know the numbers off the top of my head right now but I think that's one way that they deal with it is if they make a finer fiber, it feels nicer. So even though like you'd, you'd think it wouldn't matter because you're going to sort of giant by comparison, the, the actual size of the fibers makes a big difference in how it feels in your hand. Um, other things that they can control are like twist and how many plies that they've got twisted together and how hard they've twisted those together. So if you pick these apart... Um, let me see if I can get to the center here. Uh, I don't actually even need the center. The outside will work. Um, no, I'm just going to pull some plies apart here. So I'm going to cut this guy apart. Um, maybe. So you've got here, you've got a yarn, and I'm going to pick the plies apart. So this is how much twist the yarn has. And so when a when a yarn is really twisted down, you can twist this yarn way, way tighter. 
Uh, my husband's going to zoom in a little bit, so this makes a little bit more sense. Um, but anyway, so you've got plies here. And one of the things they can control is how much twist is between the plies and then how much twist each ply had. And so that can make a difference to uh, how they feel in your hand, um, which is just referred to as the hand of the yarn. Um, so we're going to zoom in real quick and see if this makes a little bit more sense here. All right. So here is the yarn. And you can pick it apart into the individual plies. Let me pull this apart. Um, and it wants to coil up on you pretty badly when you do this. But let me cut this. All right. So now I've got two of the plies and I can pick these two apart. Come on. There we go. All right. So this is one of the plies in the yarn. And you can see it's got some twist to it. And you can see the little crinkles where it's been twisted against the other yarns. Um, so controlling how tight this is spun. Controlling how tight the plies are spun against each other. And controlling the, uh, the diameter of the fibers in there. Um, all give different feels in your hand. Um, like as you touch them. So a coarse fiber is probably cheaper for them to produce. And then they might spin it together more or less. Um, and, and then you get better or worse yarns. There's also a whole bunch of technology that goes into these anti-pilling yarns um, that are, from my understanding, they don't actually pill less. They're just able to shed their pills. So uh, from what I've read, at least on Premier's website, it sounds like they don't pill less. They just are able to get rid of the pills. And so you lose the fiber, um, but there isn't a whole lot you can do to just stop pilling because that means you have to stop it from having hair on the surface. Because the surface, like the little surface hairs roll themselves together into a little knot and then you get a pill and so i don't don't quote me a million percent on this but like from what i've picked up from the fiber industry the the biggest things that affect softness and and things like this um i i work a little bit with fiber but i don't work at all with uh like acrylics so from what i've picked up the biggest thing that plays into softness is the the diameter of the individual fibers and then from there how hard they've twisted them together um, when you twist things really really tightly you get you get stronger thing like stronger yarn but sometimes strength isn't the the best thing you really want like a more spongy feel so a, like a more plush yarn Hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, it's amazing how different an entire aisle of all acrylic yarns and some feel great and some feel like utter trash. And it's like, well, they're all acrylic. I don't really get it. Where I've always felt like cotton yarns, um, unless we're talking about like mercerized cotton, cotton yarns generally feel pretty samey. Um, there aren't too many cottons that just feel like utterly amazing as yarn. They're all pretty much the same. Um, Dina's asking, what can we use to substitute uh, the Red Heart Huga charm? Um, I will pull that out as the next project and we can talk about that. All right. So this is a project that I am working on. Um, it is on Red Heart's website. It is a cabled hooded, I don't know if they call it a hooded cowl or a hooded scarf. Um, the idea here is that this part is going to be the side of the hood. And then this is going to come down to a point at the front and at the back. And so you'll like, this will be the side and then down the center of the hood, down the center of the front and down 
from the hood all the way back down. Uh, so this will be the front right here. And down the whole hood and all the way down the back, there's a big cabled section. Um, and so I haven't gotten to the cabled section. I just have made this giant, like, I don't know. Reminds me of an Erlenmeyer flask. Um, it's called like a cabled scarf or cabled hood. Um, it's, it should be one of the top results and it's a Yarnspirations pattern. But, see, it reminds me a little bit of an Erlenmeyer flask shape right now. But, anyway. Um, this is pretty straightforward. It was solid single crochets. And then, so you just work single crochets for like an entire square and then you just increase on the outsides. So it's really straightforward, very beginner friendly. Um, the cables are probably not going to be quite as beginner friendly. Um, but so far we're doing so pretty good. Um, if you really, really don't want to do cables, there isn't really any reason that you couldn't follow this pattern, make the two panels for the left and right side. And then just make a plain uh, rectangle to join them or some sort of interesting textured rectangle. Um, doesn't have to be cables, could be shells, could be something interesting. As long as you just make a rectangle that you can connect the front with and then run all the way down the hood, you could ob easily modify this pattern because it's just this shape, another one of this shape, and a long two long rectangles. And that's the whole pattern. So. Um, I don't know. So far, it's turning out pretty good. It's It requires two balls of this Red Heart Huga charm. Um, I'm positive I'm butchering the way to say that. I've looked it up several places. Um, it's this Icelandic? Nor I don't remember what country this word comes from. Swedish? I don't remember. Um, it basically means cozy in that, in that, uh, like, things that are warm and homey. It doesn't have a good English translation. And it's a really popular, like, Pinteresty concept right now. And Red Heart has a whole bunch of line, uh, a whole bunch of this yarn. Um, they have a fur version, a, just a plain version that's kind of like a hairy yarn. Um... Dina's saying she, that's exactly what she wanted to make, but she doesn't have this yarn. All right, so let's take a look at what this is made of. Um, this is a number four medium yarn. It's 97% acrylic, 3% uh, other fibers. Requires a... Uh, oh, hold on, sorry. Um, seven ounce ball, 198 grams, 423 yards or 395 meters. And it suggests a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, which is an eye hook, or a 5 millimeter US 8 knitting needle. Um, so really, you're looking at any worsted weight yarn is, is probably fine. Um, it Honestly, I, what did I just have out? Red Heart Soft. It was very similar. Um, fiber content it was similar in uh the hook that they asked for we could do the math real quick i lost the label here's the label um it's 113 grams 204 yards this is 198 grams 432 yards it's really close this is seven ounces Yeah, it's going to be pretty close. Um, I could pull a calculator out, but the, the, the yardage per weight ends up pr pretty much the same. Um, so really, you're looking at any worsted weight. I would say sort of on the light end of worsted weight. I wouldn't go with like a uh, like an Aran, which is A-R-A-N, which is like a heavy worsted. Um, but... This yarn would be fine. I actually think I have, if you wanted something sparkly, the, the charm yarn is sparkly. Um, I do have some Karen Simply Soft here, um, which is similarly colored, but is available at Joanne Fabric. 
Um, I actually really like the Red Heart Charm yarn better than the Karen Simply Soft because the uh, this is still the wrapped style, like the the glittery portion is wrapped around the yarn, which is not the way I like my glittery yarns. Um, even in the charm yarn, but it's much more buried in there. Um, so it, it doesn't slip and slide down the yarn like the, uh, Simply Soft Party does. So you can actually get like, as you're working, um, this, the little glittery portion will slide down the yarn. So, and sometimes like bunch up on you if you're not sort of paying attention and being careful with it, but it's easy to separate out. Um, so Karen Simply Soft Party works fine. Um, the Red Heart Charm, if you can get it, is seems like a pretty nice yarn. Um, I originally bought this at Walmart. They did not have it when I went back. I had to go to Hobby Lobby to get the second ball. Um, and they did have a handful of colors in stock there. But I think really any worsted weight yarn, I'm trying to think of something that this would look really interesting in. I probably would stay away from color changing yarns because I think it'll be really hard to control where your colors are at. And you might end up with some really crazy striping going on because you're going to need a whole section that's going to color change here. Another section that won't match unless you really work to line it up. And then you're going to have cables that are going nuts with color changes elsewhere. So I don't think I would probably tend towards a self-striping or a color changing yarn. Um, something speckled would probably be fine. Um, yeah. Other than that, I, I think you're pretty good in any worsted to slightly light, light end of worsted yarn. Um, so I'm not sure if that, if that's much help, but, but yeah, the, that's what I would su suggest. The other thing that I always suggest is if you find the pattern on Ravelry and then you go to the project page, um, so like you're on, on the page with the pattern up at the top, there's a bunch of little tabs and it'll say like a number and then projects. If you click on that, um, it will show you all of the projects that people have uploaded photos in. Um, so there will probably be several that are done in the charm yarn and then a whole bunch that are done in other yarns. And so you can like flip through that page and look around and see if there's a like one that you like and see what yarn they used. Um, so that's, that's sort of the other way you can go about this is if you're, if you don't want to use this yarn, you can see what other people did and see how it turns out, uh, in different yarns and different, like people will use, I'm sure somebody has used like, uh, mandala yarn and it probably looks a little bit crazy because again, it's a self-striping yarn, but you can see what it looks like. And somebody has probably used some other sparkly yarn. So you can see how it looks with that. Um, so that's that's my suggestion is if you have a worsted on hand, you're going to need 400-ish grams. Uh, if you are going to go to the store, but you just know you can't get the charm yarn, um, then I would look around on Ravelry and see what other people used. All right, moving on. Uh, Shaleen's also saying hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, what else do I have? This is one I think I showed last week, but I got it done. Um, this is a, it's the Snowfall, Snowfall Slouchy Hat. Um, actually, I don't think I showed this one. This is the one where I was explaining that I made a hat for a coworker and gave it to him to try on his, uh, he's got twins, gave it to him to try them on, and then he didn't bring it back, so I wasn't able to replicate it. Um, I did my best, but I'm not positive it's exactly the same size. Um, so this is, this is the Snowfall Slouchy hat. I don't remember the designer offhand, um, but it should have like a red and 
blue hat in the main picture with like little white hearts. So I made this out of chic sheep. Um, the first hat that I made had a white brim, a purple body, and little white accent hearts. This is sort of the mirror image or the opposite of this. So you can see here, um, did purple brim, purple hearts, and the white base. I'm thinking about putting a purple pom-pom on the top of this, but I haven't decided yet. It's for pretty little kids, and I always worry about yarn pom-poms for baby hats. Um, I wouldn't mind so much if it was like a commercially made fur pom-pom, but most of the fur pom-poms I have are just too big. Uh, I've got a bucket of them over here. This one's not a good color for this, but like on this hat, it's going to be gigantic. Um, I've got some like light gray ones, but it's just going to be really enormous. So I might just leave it, bl leave it off and, uh, let the parents decide. But this is, uh, again, red heart, she red heart, chic sheep. It is a hundred percent merino wool yarn. Um, it's actually just labeled a hundred. Oh yeah. It does say merino wool on the front. I was going to say the side only says wool. Uh, it's a number four worsted weight yarn. It's, it asks for a five millimeter or H hook or a five millimeter or US eight knitting needle. And where are the numbers? There they are. Uh, 3.5 ounce or hundred grams and it's 186 yards or 170 meters. Um, this co this color is called poolside. Um, I don't remember what the colors were on the purple and white, but, uh, I did use the purple and white for both hats that I made. And I've just got this one here to share. Um, this was a pretty easy pattern. I thought that it was well written. Um, I think this one was a paid pattern. I don't remember. This one might've been the pattern that was available, um, for free on the person's blog or, uh, paid if you want to download a PDF, but it had a pretty good description of how to do the little hearts. They're pretty straightforward. Um, if you've never carried yarn with, so you can see, if you go to the zoomed in, um, what you might be able to see on here is that like, there's a purple heart here and a purple heart here, but underneath these stitches, um, if I separate it out, you can see that I've carried the purple along behind the stitches. So on the rows where you're doing the color changes, you carry the yarn behind um, so that you don't have to keep breaking and retying. That way it keeps the inside a lot cleaner. So you can see here, um, there's just these little partial stitches if I turn it inside out. And then where I carried my purple up, in between the rows, there's just like a little seam here, but I didn't have to do thousands and thousands of, you know, loose ends that I had to tie in or anything. Um, it's just, you carry this behind the single crochet rows. So um, if you haven't done that, it's a fun thing to learn. And I thought the tutorial from the pattern designer was pretty good. So. Um... Okay, so Dina's saying it has to be a weight four. Can it be color made easy, which is a five? Um, if you do it with a five weight yarn, you're going to you're going it's going to be bigger unless you adjust the pattern. So what you'd probably have to do is take a few stitches out of the width. And take a few stitches out of, or a few rows out of the pattern for the side panels. Um, and then when you do the cables, you probably will just do less repeats so that it matches. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be bigger, um, which might also be fine. Like if you just, it's a one size pattern. So if you want it a little bit larger, going up a size of yarn will just accomplish that for you. Um, but when you substitute yarn, the, at the beginning of a pattern, there's always a gauge. So they'll tell you how many stitches they had um, in a certain length. So I think this was, I want to say it was uh, like 30, 
maybe it was eight stitches and four inches or something like that. I, that seems way too big. I'm trying to remember. It's not coming to me. But anyway, the, it'll give you a, a gauge. Um, if you want to meet that gauge, you need to make up a swatch, just basically like a square out of your yarn and count your stitches across and count your stitches high and see if you match their gauge. And then you either have to go up or down a uh, crochet hook size to adjust, or you know that you're going to be X percent too big or too small. So if you are are putting in too many stitches, you're just going to end up with a bigger product. Or I guess not too many stitches, but your stitches are too big compared to their stitches. You're going to end up with a bigger final project. So um, for me personally, I think the hood is designed for like, a average size woman and I'm a little bit bigger, I might actually prefer to go up a hook size so that everything's a little bit bigger and it fits over like my shoulders a little bit more comfortably. So that might be an option as well. Um, but you wouldn't want to go up to a number five weight and design it for a kid. Um, you'd rather, you should rather switch to a smaller size so that it gets a little bit smaller. Um, all right. Clear this stuff off to the side here. What else do I have? Oh, I've got another baby hat. It's kind of a baby hat weekend. I was in the mood to make baby hats, and then I kind of got on a roll with them. So um, so this is Loops and Threads Cozy Wool. Um, I bought it in two different colors. I got this gray color, and then this one is called Velvet, I guess. It's in three languages there. I was confused as to what was going on there. Um, I don't know why it's got two different labels. I assume one's an old label and one's a new label, but the colors matched pretty well, so I just bought both of them. Um, they obviously are not the same dye lot because they were made at different times with different labels. But they are still the same yarn. So I have... This is, again... Loops and Threads Cozy Wool. It's 50% wool, 50% acrylic. Doesn't specify what kind of wool, but it's reasonably soft. It doesn't feel scratchy at all. Um, I did make a little hood for a baby, and I don't have any worries about it being too itchy or anything for a baby. Um, it's pretty nice feeling wool. This asks for, let's see, a... All right, let's do some numbers. It is 90 yards or, f wow, okay. It's 4.5 ounces or 127.5 grams and is 90 yards or 82 meters. They suggest a nine millimeter or US 13 knitting needle or a nine millimeter US M uh, crochet hook. So M may or may not be the right letter. Um, the important thing is that it's nine millimeter. Past a, like, seven millimeter uh, crochet hook, things get really fuzzy. Um, everyone sort of labels just at random. So I think my hooks are labeled M slash N, N slash O, O slash P, and P slash Q. And so, like, nobody knows what letter they're supposed to be. They should just be M, N, O, P, Q. Um, but they... I guess there's no consensus reached on whether they're what letter they belong to. So um, actually what's funny is this one says, oh, this is for the scarf on the pattern. Um, it's interesting that they recommend a nine millimeter uh, crochet hook as like the standard recommendation. And then if you turn it around, there's in, there's information on the pattern. So this woman is wearing a crocheted scarf and they recommend a 15 millimeter uh, USP slash Q hook. So it's it's a good reminder that just because the yarn has a recommendation on one side doesn't mean that you can't work it with a different size. Um, so this is obviously meant to be worked open and be a little bit drapey. And you can see, I'm going to switch to the close up view. So you can see on this woman here, she's wearing this scarf and it's kind of draped nicely over her. If you had worked this exact same pattern with a M hook in nine millimeters instead of the P slash Q in 15 millimeters, it's going to have no drape. It's going to be a very stiff fabric. Um, 
where if you wanted sort of a structured hat, you definitely want to go with the hook that they recommended rather than the Q 15 millimeter hook. So um, just keep that in mind. Like if you're, if you're working on a pattern, feel free to change hook sizes, um, especially on giant yarns. It, you can make them, you can make fabric that's really too stiff and has just no drape and won't be comfortable to wear. So it, it's fine to change hook sizes and go up, especially on a project where gauge does not matter. So for something like a scarf or a cowl or something that's going to be drapey and big anyway, um, it doesn't really matter if you meet gauge. And if, if it feels too stiff, it probably is too stiff. And you should just go up a couple hook sizes so that you get more air and like space in your stitches. And then things will move and flow and drape a lot better. So just a side reminder there that you... You get to call the shots on what hook size you use, really. So, um, so yeah, that's Cozy Wool. I had actually never seen Cozy Wool. I don't know if I just wasn't paying attention, but uh, this is a 50% wool, and I really like having as much natural fiber content as I can in a project. So 50% wool is great, and it's actually a pretty nice feeling yarn. Um, what I made out of that is the Bailey Bear Cowl uh, from Acorn Designs. Acorn something designs, I think. I don't remember the other word, but um, I really like this little bear cowl. Um, you work it in the round, and then a, when you get this high, you start working back and forth. You do the little ears. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's all done in, uh, I think, half double crochets, so pretty be beginner friendly. Um, and they turn out pretty cute. They're actually really nice for babies. Uh, I probably wouldn't use them for like tiny infants, but like kids that can start pulling hats off. These are a little bit harder for them to start yanking off and throwing on the ground and it keeps them pretty nice and warm. So, um, if you go over to Instagram or Facebook at Experiments and Crafting, um, I posted a reminder that we were starting the stream tonight, but if you flip to the next picture, you can see Toothless, uh, my, my stuffed Toothless from Build-A-Bear, uh, wearing this little hood. So he looked pretty cute. Um, but yeah, so there is a little hood. Stands up pretty well on its own. Um, well, now it flopped over, but... That is the other hat that goes with the set that I made for my coworker. So I made two hats, one hood, one beanie, gave them both to him, and then I made the the duplicates so that each twin has both hats. So these will go to we'll probably do some pictures of these and then they'll go to my coworker uh sometime later this week probably. All right. What else do I have? Oh. Last project I've got here is with Woolies Thick and Quick. Um, I just really liked this color when I was shopping. I went and picked up, um, I was actually going because I wanted, I have super bulky yarn in about 4 million colors, and I did not have one single ball of just a plain light gray, which is the color that I wanted for the hood. Um, so I went to Michael's and I bought the plain light gray in cozy wool. I also picked up some in charisma. So I've got some on hand. Um, but while I was there, they also had this Woolies thick and quick in this really pretty gray. And I don't know if you guys can see the colors really well, or maybe if we switch to this. Um, but there's lots of like little hints. And my husband says, I think they sort of look like stains, but, um, there's little sections here that have a little bit of hint of blue, hint of pink, um, just sort of mixed all through. This color is called Stormfront. So I don't know how well you guys can see that, the pinks and blues, but I don't know. I really thought it was pretty. This is a sort of cowl. Um, I have no idea what this pattern was called. I could look it up real quick. It's on my phone. Um, but the intent here is that you put uh, some buttonholes in 
when you work the pattern. So you can see there's a row with buttonholes. You put buttons on this side. Uh, actually, you put them over here. So the buttonholes come across and they lay like this and you get like a triangle shaped cowl to wear. It tucks in really nice into a jacket uh, and just really like stays nice and snug without getting all up against your throat. Um, I have a real issue with things touching too much against my throat. Um, I think I've mentioned this a couple times, but I've broken the necklace that I'm wearing uh, three, four times. I don't remember. Kind of a lot. Um, but pulling away clothes away from my neck, mostly like hooded sweatshirts. They get too close to my throat and I've reached in and pulled to keep them away and popped this necklace. So... Uh, this design on the cowl is really nice because it looks like it's up against my throat, but it's actually hitting my chin. Um, and I have plenty of like space in here that I can get my hand. And so it doesn't feel like it's real claustrophobic. So I don't know. I really enjoyed this. It worked up super fast. Um, it was a really easy pattern. It was worked in the front loops and back loops alternating. Um, and it's just double and single crochets, but it gave this like really nice nubby texture. Um, let me, I'm going to try and keep talking and look this up on my phone real quick, but it's in my downloads on my phone. Um, I'm near positive. It is called the Bonfire Cowl by Hooked Hazel. Um, it was a paid pattern. I, th it, it's a pretty simple pattern, but it was well written. And I don't mind paying for, um, I guess what I don't mind paying for is even if they're very simple patterns, as long as they're well written and it was something that it was not super intuitive to just figure out. So even though this was a very simple, straightforward pattern, I didn't mind paying for it because you're sort of paying for the designer to come up with these things and I didn't come up with this it wasn't a really easy texture that I could have just looked up in a book um but it wasn't a complex pattern and that doesn't bother me to have to pay for it so um other people feel differently and or their budgets are different but this was a cowl that I I liked quite a bit um and I liked the the shape where it came down into that triangle so I Actually, surprisingly, I've been struggling to find buttons that I like for it um, because it's such a weird color. Um, I can't really find a color that I like to coordinate with it. So um, I've got some like gray purple buttons that I uh, picked up from Walmart that I'm going to try. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, I think, oh, I've got the Lytherco box. I was thinking that I was just about out of things to show you guys. Yeah. Um, if you guys have yarn questions or, uh, crochet questions or anything like that, feel free to throw those in the, uh, live chat and we can talk about those. Um, so I've got this Lytherco box and again, please feel free to, uh, throw in any comments, questions, anything crochet related you guys want to talk about, um, yarn questions, whatnot. Um, I've got my little package opener and we are going to get the, this open. All right. So I don't know if you guys enjoy seeing me open these or not. Um, I like getting these boxes and I think they're kind of fun to un unbox on stream just so you guys can see what's in them, uh, even if you don't get them yourself. Um, all right, what do we got? Ooh, this is fun. Um, so this is called Turtle Bay. It is kind of a weird mix of colors, but I kind of like it. Um, it's got sort of some like browns and like rusty burgundy kind of colors down here at the bottom there's some green and i don't know cream beige in here 
And then the other side is like a brighter green, a deep dark orange, a brighter orange, and then like a fuchsia and purple. Um, so it's a really interesting mix of colors, kind of like a fall, uh, sort of fall and sunset sort of uh, blend here. But it's called Turtle Bay. Um, let's see. What else we got going on here? Um, the hook this week or this uh, box is a 2.25. Um, I should mention that this yarn is a uh, superwash merino. It's 328 yards or 100 grams. Um, the hook here is 2.25 millimeter hook. And this is, again, the draw on this box is that it is a hand-turned hook with a, like, metal hook inserted into the center. Um, and then the yarn is hand-dyed. Um, it also comes with a pattern and then sort of like a little freebie gift type of thing. So there's the hook and the yarn. The little gift is a stitch marker. Um, this week is a turtle. Um, so it's kind of got like a little pearl here. Again, the uh, yarn was called Turtle Bay. So the theme is sort of turtle related. Um, there is a butterfly shaped button. So not sure what that goes with. But often if the pattern is... Oh, okay. So, looks like, and I'm covering the links because they are sort of paid patterns. Um, but the patterns are a sort of a mug cozy, which is what the button is for to finish off the the little wrap around this mug. It has like a little button, and then fingerless gloves. And it looks like you can probably make both items out of the same skein of yarn. So it looks really pretty worked up, as far as I can see here. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a pretty, pretty good deal. So there's the front side of that little card there. Um, kind of goes with the turtle theme. So... Um, again, I get this monthly. It's not something I get any, uh, like, it's not a sponsored stream or anything. I just like unboxing them on stream. I think the box is about $40. Uh, I think it's $40 shipped. So it could be $40 and then shipping. I don't remember, honestly. Um, but you get the hand-dyed yarn. A hand turn hook, a little surprise, and more often than not, it seems to be two patterns. I think it only guarantees like one pattern, but it seems to have been two for the last several months. Um, one of the things that I really like about this box is that they give you the items to do a project completely. In this case, the little mug wrap, like the mug cozy, um, needs a button to hold it together, and so it included the button. Um, there was another month where it was a little, uh, little uh, llama sort of lovey, where you do like a head and arms and then a little blanket section. And that included the safety eyes to do the eyes for the llama and like a little contrast piece of thread so that you could sew on a nose um, and the stuffing to even stuff the little head. So... I, I always felt like it's it's sort of a nice little package deal. Um, you get everything to make the pattern that they suggest. You certainly can do a different pattern with the yarn if you want. Um, but I, I like the way that they sort of have everything all wrapped up in one little box. And you get everything to do it. So um, I've been happy with the boxes. I will be perfectly honest, and I haven't really used much of them. Um... I just am a bit of a yarn hoarder, and so I will continue to get the boxes because I like getting them. Um, but, but yeah, so I will eventually get to working through some of these patterns. Um, but 
in the meantime, I enjoy collecting the yarn and the patterns. So. All right. Um, that's really all I've got to show you guys tonight. Um, Runaway Needles re Reds asking if I've actually made the patterns. I have not. I've looked through several of them, and they look pretty well written. Um, but I, I haven't really made the patterns yet. Um, that's just me not getting to things and prioritizing baby hats over projects for myself, really. Um, I might try and dig into some of these yarns for Christmas presents. Um, there's some interesting, one of the things that I really like about the box is that it's not just, uh, not just hats and not just, uh, scarves or, uh, shawls or whatever. It's, uh, there's, there's been a variety of projects. So like I said, there was a llama lovey. Uh, this week's had a mug cozy and fingerless gloves. There was one that had a table runner as an option. So like a lot of variety, um, which I really like. It's not just sort of the same thing over and over again. So um, let's see, Stephanie's asking, uh, how do I feel about using two different yarns in one pattern. Um, I think it's totally fine to use two different yarns, especially if you're doing like a striping type project or something. The thing that you need to look out for is that the yarns are similar enough that you don't end up with uh, like differences in your stitch size. So I made a Amigurumi, what was that, a zebra for... Uh, my husband's coworker visiting from uh, outside the country. And I made this little zebra and I, it was a, if you think of like the zebra stripe gum, it was a white horse basically with multicolored stripes um, making, so it wasn't black and white. It was all different rainbow stripes and a bunch of the yarns work just fine together. The white, and like the red and the yellow and the orange were all fine. But the blue and green that I used, because I wanted a very specific blue and green, um, they didn't quite match. And um, they they ended up like the, the stripes were slightly thinner and like tighter because the yarns were slightly smaller. And so it, it, it wasn't perfect. Um, the recipient didn't mention it and probably didn't notice and because you're always your own worst critic, but I remember mixing those yarns didn't go perfectly. Um, and if I had done it over, I probably would have spent a little bit more time making sure that the yarns were more compatible. Um, but the... All right, so in this specific case, you need two different colors, but you have one indie one that you want to use, and you only have one. Um, so the thing that I always do to try and size yarns against each other is figure out how many yards in, like, yards you get per gram. So if you take the yardage, so if we say, like, a sock yarn is 500 yards, and it's a 100-gram ball, um, you get 50 yards per gram. If you find another yarn that's pretty close to that, that gets you sort of the right yarn for the project. The other thing that you kind of want to look at, and it's not as big of a deal, but can matter, is how tightly twisted and like what the twist looks like. So there's certain yarns, like if you look up uh, Madeline Tosh, Tosh Sock. Tosh Sock is a really, really high twist yarn where you see like all of the twists and it's all about like looking really twisty um versus what is the other one tosh light or something like that um or just a normal yarn they they're not as highly twisted and so they can look different like right next to each other so if you're doing like stripes right on top of each other um getting yarns that look somewhat similar 
uh, just by eye can can make a difference. And sometimes it, they look just fine if you mix them intentionally. Just know that like they might play off each other a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, that's I guess that's my my biggest recommendation is match try and match fiber content. So if you're using 100% wool, I would try and stay with something close to 100% wool for the other one. You could do a a, a slight blend. Um, for example, I have a ton of sock yarn that's 75% wool, 25% nylon. Tons and tons of it. And then I have a whole bunch that is, I think, 70%, uh, like 70%, what am I saying? 70% merino, uh, 15% nylon, and 15% cashmere or something like that. Um, so a yarn like that, you could you could mix those. You could do a 70, 25, and a or 75, 25 and a 70, basically 30 blend. Um, those would be fine with each other, as long as they're roughly the same weight, uh, yards per weight is the way I usually break things down. Um, hopefully that's not more confusing than just saying pick a yarn that looks nice with it. Um, but yeah, for, for matching fiber content, getting those similar. Um, the other reason to get fiber content similar is that if you have a indie dyed, we'll say like an 80-20 blend, so 80% wool, 20% nylon, um, and then you go to Hobby Lobby and pick up a similarly sized yarn but it's acrylic they're going to block really differently um so if you make a shawl out of them and it's going to be a striped shawl you're going to block it at the end acrylic is not really going to block all that well it will open up your stitches will pop into place but it's not going to hold a block where wool will and so you're going to end up with spots that are really well blocked and spots that didn't block so well um so when you match fiber content you you block sort of eat more evenly. Um, so that's another reason to try and stay in the in the same realm of yarns. So watch your fiber content and then your uh, length per weight or weight per length. Either way you work it out, just as long as those numbers end up similar. Um, let's see. Stephanie says that's helpful. That's good. Um... Sometimes I feel like I'm rambling, but hopefully it made sense somewhere in there. Um, uh, and she's saying it's different for body and edging. That matters a little bit less. So it it still will matter. Um, you want to try and match fiber content, but you're not switching back and forth like a stripe. Um, so it's it's less important that two yarns like butted up next to each other for an edging really match so much um, as when you are doing striping because you're going to be switching back and forth a whole bunch and it's going to be really noticeable when you switch back and forth. Um, a contrast edging supposed to contrast. So like if the twist doesn't match, um, if the fiber content's a little bit different, like all of those things will matter a little bit less, um, but it will still matter a bit. So uh, yeah, if anyone else has got questions i'm happy to help a bit um see what i can answer about fiber or yarn or crochet or whatever uh whatever questions you've got tonight um my husband's putting up the ad experiments in crafting so if you ever have questions that are like after we are no longer live you can find me on facebook and instagram at experiments in crafting Feel free to message me on either of those platforms and ask whatever questions you'd like. Try and be responsive on there. Um, though I have noticed recently that Facebook's messaging, like, notifications are not great. So a lot of times I get those much more delayed than uh, I would like. Um, you can also leave comments on any relevant video or, like, after the live stream if you've got a question about something we've talked about there. Um... There is a community tab. I don't really understand how it works on YouTube. It doesn't seem to give notifications of any sort. Um, so I try and check that occasionally, but I would say that's probably not my favorite way if you're going to try and get a hold of me. 
um, especially with anything semi-urgent, um, where you have a question about something you want to work on, you know, right now. Um, Facebook and Instagram are definitely better routes there. So, um, yeah, if there's no other questions, uh, Stephanie's asking if I have favorite beads. Um, I, I guess I don't really have favorite beads in the, like, brand sense. Um, the beads that I use most often are 6 aught uh, Czech glass. Um, so they're... They're just glass seed beads. You can get Czech glass pretty much any place that carries seed beads. Um, they usually come in tubes. So these ones are from Joanne Fabric. Um, oh, no. These say they're from... Oh, yeah. These are from Joanne Fabric. Um, they're Beater's Paradise. Um, I really enjoyed this lady. I showed these on a live stream before, but we... Found this booth at Stitches Midwest this summer. Um, this is from a company called Gilding Lilies. And she was really, really nice, very helpful. She's got a nice uh, website. It's not perfect. It's got some missing pictures and whatnot. But uh, she was really nice because she said if you, if you have yarn in mind that you're going to use, um, if you snip off a little section and mail it to her, she would help you pick out beads like she would lay it out next to the beads and see what went with and send you pictures she was willing to like talk you through helping find contrasting beads versus matching beads um really really nice and had a really like wide selection in colors um i'll lay these out real quick so you can just kind of see what i bought but um I go through these in more detail if you find the live stream from After Stitches. So I've got aqua matte ones, or purple lined aqua matte, um, trans transparent blue zircon matte here, uh, silver lined hyacinth are these bright orange ones, uh, silver lined purple are the next ones, uh, silver lined Dark Black Diamond, Silver Line Dark Cobalt, and Purple Lined Amethyst are the ones that I've got laid out here. And I think they look relatively similar, at least on my view, but hopefully you can see the difference there. Um, these matte ones are pretty cool. They are, they're almost like frosted looking. Um, and then the Purple Lined ones are obviously appeal to me because I'm a big, big, big fan of purple. So... Um, but yeah, I guess as, as far as a type, uh, six aught, which is, which is written six slash zero. Um, and primarily I use six aught because six aught is what goes with, uh, sock weight yarn and sock weight's my favorite. So, um, six aught check glass is the most common bead type that I use. I found that wooden beads tend to have holes that are too small. For me to stick a crochet hook through, but they probably, you could probably manage to get a beetle needle through and and get onto um, a project. I just, I don't really like wooden beads all that much. Um, I just like the form factor on the check glass. They're they're nice and like little, and they look really nice on a finished project. So, um, other than that, I don't really know what your other choices in beads are besides glass. I guess plastic. I wouldn't really want to use plastic. I think they would be just, I don't know how they would look on a, I, I guess I haven't really seen any plastic beads that aren't like pony beads. And that just reminds me of like being in fourth grade and making bead lizards. So, um, I don't know. Do you guys remember bead lizards? I used to make those like crazy. And then, I don't know. I don't think anyone's ever heard of a bead lizard since then. So, um, they were pretty fun to make. I've made teeny tiny ones out of seed beads. So, uh, do I prefer matching or, uh, contrasting, uh, beads? Um, it's funny because the couple bead projects that I've done, I've used matching beads, but I probably prefer contrasting beads. Um, I like them to match, I guess I... 
I shouldn't say I should prefer contrasting beads. I would like them to match some part of the shawl. Um, so I wouldn't make a whole blue shawl and then put orange beads on there. Um, just because that's not my style. But I guess if it's like a color changing yarn, I would sort of like the beads to be a color that was in the color changing yarn or something like that. Um, I guess otherwise I prefer matching because I, I want them to go along with the shawl. So uh, I did make a beaded shawl. I don't know where it's at. I've shown it a bunch of times. It's a blue beaded shawl um, with sort of a floral edge. And it is a bright blue and it has these bright blue beads on the end. And given my choice, I probably would not have used these. This is what I had access to. These were just from Joanne and they worked with the yarn. Um, I probably would have gone with something like these where they're like real deep and dark. They would have looked nice with it, but they would have sort of been matchy matchy. So, um, where my husband would probably go with contrasting and find me. Um, he's got a lot of apps on his phones that'll help pick palettes. So if there's like burgundy and, you know, a navy blue or something it'll help you pick the color that goes best with that palette um which is kind of nice we've used that a bunch of times to pick yarns to go with a project so uh who makes that app adobe makes that what is that called color match oh adobe capture is what we use for that you can take a picture of like a bunch of things um, how do I want to say this? You, you can take a picture of like, like a bunch of yarns and it will look at the colors in there and like pick a palette out of there. And so you can sort of pick the ones that make a nice palette. So we've like taken a picture of like a wall of yarn and it'll help like pick, like give you palettes that go nicely. Um, if you sort of think of going to like Home Depot and being um, in the paint aisle. So they have all the paint colors, but then there's usually like little books in the front of like painted rooms. And then there's like little palette cards where it'll say, use this for the trim and this for an accent wall and this for the ceiling and this for the rest of the walls or whatever. And all of those colors sort of like make a palette this will sort of do that for you. Like it'll show you a bunch of those colors and help you pick palettes. So um, I'm pretty bad at deciding what colors go together. Um, I leave a lot of that up to my husband and just trust his judgment in a lot of cases when, I, when I'm buying yarns. Um, otherwise I tend to buy yarns that are just pink, purple, and blue. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, Shleen's saying that you're handy. Um, he's pretty handy. So he'll go to yarn shows with me and help me pick things and look through all the colors and find ones that go together so that I can get a good set to then probably never make a project out of. Because <laughs> I, I do a lot more yarn buying than I do crocheting, I think. So... I try to keep up. I'm pretty much always crocheting, so it's not for lack of trying. But, um, yeah, I think that's really all. We are going to Michigan this weekend, and um, so I don't know if I'll do any yarn shopping. We might come across some little yarn stores. Um, I know that there are an absolute boatload of uh yarn stores in like the Detroit area not really sure why but there's a lot of yarn stores going on in that area and we are not going anywhere near there so I don't know what else is around um but if I happen across any I might have some stuff to show you guys on Tuesday um but other than that I don't have any major plans just going to keep working on projects. Um, 
a friend of ours is having a baby, so I'm probably going to work on a baby blanket over the weekend. Um, but other than that, yeah, that's really all my plans for crochet and yarn projects right now. Uh, going to try and finish up some of these things that I've got hanging out over here. Planning on trying to get the buttons sewn onto that cowl so I can wear it this weekend. Um, but, yeah. Um, if you guys have any other questions or things you want to talk about, yarn-related, crochet-related, go ahead and throw those in the chat. Otherwise, we'll probably wrap up for this week and check back in um, next week. So we have been doing pretty good at streaming at 8 o'clock on Tuesday nights. Um, so if you are available and you want to get notifications about when we are streaming, go ahead and hit the little bell. Uh, just be careful to not unsubscribe yourself if you're already a subscriber. Uh, when you hit the bell, you'll get a little drop down that'll uh, let you choose between all and personalized. You should choose all so that you get the most amount of notifications for the channel. Um, and then if you are a subscriber and you're still not getting notifications, you can also follow me at Experiments and Crafting, um, on either Facebook or Instagram. I usually post right before we start streaming, uh, a reminder to come watch. So if you get notifications on Facebook or Instagram, you would also get a notification through there, uh, instead of just relying on the YouTube notifications, which are flaky sometimes. So, um, but yeah, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up for the evening. Uh, thank you to everyone who joined us this week and asked questions and all that. And hopefully you enjoyed seeing some of the projects that I worked on uh, throughout the last week or so. And uh, I'll have more projects hopefully done to share with you guys on Tuesday next week. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.